Valves that are used to regulate the flow of fluids through process systems often have to be opened, closed, or throttled. And in many situations, they need to be controlled from a remote location. That's where actuators come into play. Actuators are mechanisms that are used to move or control other devices, like valves. Actuators allow valves to be repositioned from a central remote location, such as a control room. So they reduce the need for operators to operate or reposition valves by hand. There are a number of different types of valve actuators. Typically, a solenoid actuator, or simply a solenoid, is used for on-off control of a valve. Solenoids can position a valve from fully open to fully closed quickly, so they're particularly useful for emergency shutoff of valves. A solenoid actuator consists of a wire coil, a spring, an armature or core, and a stem which is connected to a valve. When current flows through the wire coil, it creates a magnetic field around the coil, which in effect becomes an electromagnet. The armature, which is a solid metal core, is attracted to the magnetic field. This attraction pulls the armature toward the center of the coil. As the armature moves, it compresses the spring and moves the stem, opening the valve in the process. When current flow through the coil stops, the magnetic field is lost. This allows the spring to push the armature and stem back to their original positions and closes the valve. When current flow starts or stops, the movement of the armature is almost instantaneous. When current flow starts, the actuator will fully open the valve, and when current flow stops, it will fully close the valve. There's no intermediate or in-between position, so there's no way that the solenoid actuator used in this example can throttle a valve. Since most solenoids operate this way, they're typically used with on-off valves. Also, solenoid actuators don't produce a great deal of force when they operate. So when a valve has to be throttled, or when more force is needed to position a valve, a different type of actuator is generally used. On a piping system diagram, a solenoid actuator may be represented by this symbol. Typically, a solenoid actuator, or simply a solenoid, is used for on-off control of a valve. When a valve has to be throttled, or when a large amount of force is needed to position a valve, such as in the case of large valves, a motor-operated actuator, or simply a motor operator, may be used. A motor operator consists of a motor and a set of gears that turn the valve stem to open or close the valve. It also has a hand wheel, a lever, and switches. This particular motor operator has two types of switches connected to its gears, a limit switch and a torque switch. When this motor operator is energized to reposition a valve, the motor drives the gears. The gears move the valve stem to position the valve. The lever is used with the hand wheel to position the valve manually in the event of a problem with some other part of the motor operator. On this type of motor operator, depressing the lever disengages the motor from the gearing and connects the hand wheel to the valve stem through part of the gearing. The limit switch and the torque switch in the motor operator ensure that the valve is positioned without damaging the valve or the motor operator. The torque switch deals with the torque or the amount of turning force produced by the motor operator. The lever is used with the hand wheel to position the valve manually in the event of a problem with some other part of the motor operator. The torque switch cuts off the current to the motor when the torque or turning force produced by the motor operator reaches a preset amount. Ideally, the torque switch limits the force on the valve stem to prevent damage, but at the same time ensures a tight seal between the valve disc and seat. Also, if an obstruction blocks stem movement in a valve, a properly set torque switch can cut off the motor before damage occurs. While a torque switch cuts off current to the motor when the turning force reaches a preset amount, a limit switch cuts off current to the motor when a valve reaches a preset position. The limit switch allows the actuator to move the valve stem only within a certain desired range. For example, the limit switch on this motor operator shuts off the current to the motor when the valve is fully open. 
Now, even though a motor operator consists of many different components, it's usually represented by a single symbol on a piping system diagram. This is one example of a symbol that may be used to represent a motor operator on a piping system diagram. In this topic, we discuss different types of electric actuators that can be used to position valves. We looked at solenoid actuators and at motor operated actuators. We saw how these actuators are designed and how they operate. Now let's try some practice questions. Hydraulic actuators generally develop more force than similar sized air operated actuators. That's because some of the force exerted on an air operated actuator is used up in compressing the air in the actuator. Liquids, on the other hand, aren't compressible for the most part. So more of the force exerted on the hydraulic fluid goes directly toward positioning the valve connected to the actuator. The power supplied by hydraulic actuators makes them very suitable for the operation of large valves. This hydraulic actuator consists of a cylinder, a fluid port at the base of the cylinder, a vent, a spring, a piston, and a piston rod, which is connected to the valve disc. In this example, when there's no fluid pressure against the piston, the spring keeps the piston at its lowest position in the cylinder and the valve is closed. When fluid flows through the port into the cylinder, the piston moves upward. As it moves, the piston compresses the spring and opens the valve. Any air in the cylinder above the piston is exhausted through the vent. When the flow of fluid stops, the fluid pressure and spring hold the piston and the valve at their new positions. Now, when the hydraulic fluid pressure is decreased, the spring forces the piston down, closing the valve, and bleeding fluid from the cylinder. The piston can be positioned anywhere in the cylinder by controlling the amount of fluid entering the cylinder or bled from the cylinder. This actuator is considered to be single acting because fluid enters the cylinder through only one port and acts on only one side of the piston. It's also described as spring return because a spring forces the piston down to close the valve. If hydraulic fluid pressure is lost, the spring will cause the valve to fail closed. On a piping system diagram, a single acting hydraulic actuator may be represented by this symbol. This actuator is considered to be single acting because fluid enters the cylinder through only one port and acts on only one side of the piston. It's also described as spring return because a spring forces the piston down to close the valve. If hydraulic fluid pressure is lost, the spring will cause the valve to fail closed. A double acting hydraulic actuator is called double acting because it uses hydraulic fluid pressure to both open and close a valve. A double acting hydraulic actuator consists of a cylinder, a fluid port at the base of the cylinder, a second fluid port at the top of the cylinder, a piston, and a piston rod, which is connected to the valve disc. Fluid can enter the cylinder through either of the two ports to move the piston up or down. In this example, if fluid enters through the top port, it pushes the piston and piston rod down to close the valve. An equal volume of fluid is bled through the lower port. When fluid flow is directed into the lower port, it causes the piston and piston rod to move up, opening the valve. At the same time, an equal volume of fluid flows out of the upper port of the cylinder. When the flow of fluid is stopped, fluid is trapped on both sides of the piston, and the piston is held in place by the trapped fluid. The piston can be positioned anywhere in the cylinder by controlling the amount of fluid entering the cylinder through one port and bled from the cylinder through the other port. On a piping system diagram, a double acting hydraulic actuator may be represented by this symbol. A double acting hydraulic actuator is called double acting because it uses hydraulic fluid pressure to both open and close a valve. A double acting hydraulic actuator consists of a cylinder, a fluid port at the base of the cylinder, a second fluid port at the top of the cylinder, a piston, and a piston rod, which is connected to the valve disc. In order for a double acting hydraulic actuator to accurately position a valve, the amount of fluid entering the cylinder and bled from the cylinder has to be accurately controlled. 
The device selected to do this job is usually a pilot valve, or as it's sometimes referred to, a spool valve. To see how a pilot valve controls a double-acting hydraulic actuator, we'll use this simplified illustration. This is the actuator, this is the pilot valve, and these are the fluid lines that connect them. The valve is called a pilot valve because it guides or controls the flow of hydraulic fluid to and from the actuator. A pilot valve consists of a valve body, solenoids here and here, a spool, a spring at each end of the spool, a hydraulic fluid supply port, two hydraulic fluid ports to the actuator, and two hydraulic fluid vent ports. The pilot valve is operated by the solenoids, or electrical coils, which respond to signals from a controller to position the spool. In this example, one solenoid is attached to the top of the spool, and one is attached to the bottom of the spool. When both solenoids are de-energized, the springs return the spool to a neutral or centered position. Right now, both solenoids are de-energized. The spool is in a neutral position, blocking the fluid lines going to the actuator cylinder. This holds the actuator's piston in place. When the lower solenoid is energized, the spool is pulled downward. With the spool in this position, hydraulic fluid is supplied through this line to the actuator. The fluid enters the actuator cylinder at the bottom, pushing the piston up and opening the valve. At the same time, fluid is forced out of the top of the cylinder through this line, back through the pilot valve, and out through the vent port back to the hydraulic fluid supply. The filling and venting of the actuator cylinder is reversed by de-energizing the lower solenoid and energizing the upper solenoid. When the upper solenoid is energized, it pulls the spool up, blocking the upper vent line and the path for supply fluid to this line. Hydraulic fluid is now supplied to the top of the actuator cylinder, pushing the piston down and closing the valve. The fluid below the piston is vented through this line, back through the pilot valve, and out through this vent port back to the hydraulic fluid supply. The piston can be held in place by de-energizing the upper solenoid. This allows the springs to return the spool to a neutral position and blocks the fluid lines to the cylinder, holding the piston and the valve in position. Pilot valves and other devices used with hydraulic actuators are often separate from the actuator. However, in some actuators, all the components may be part of a single unit. On a piping system diagram, a pilot valve is often represented by this symbol. When the upper solenoid is energized, it pulls the spool up, blocking the upper vent line and the path for supply fluid to this line. Hydraulic fluid is now supplied to the top of the actuator cylinder, pushing the piston down and closing the valve. The fluid below the piston is vented through this line, back through the pilot valve, and out through this vent port back to the hydraulic fluid supply. Two problems commonly associated with hydraulic actuators are contamination of the hydraulic fluid and hydraulic fluid leaks. Hydraulic fluid can become contaminated with dirt, water, or other foreign substances. Some contaminants can corrode the actuator and cause the piston to stick inside the cylinder, affecting the positioning of the valve. Contaminants could also collect inside the pilot valve and prevent the pilot valve spool from shifting correctly or contaminants could block the flow pass in the pilot valve. In either case, the pilot valve would not operate correctly, and the actuator would be unable to position its valve correctly. If you notice that a hydraulic actuator is operating sluggishly, it could mean that the fluid is contaminated with water or some other foreign substance. When water is mixed with hydraulic fluid, the mixture can turn into foam, this foam causes the actuator's piston to have a spongy movement, which can cause problems with valve positioning. Operators may be able to detect water contamination by looking at the hydraulic fluid. This can usually be done at a sight glass on a hydraulic supply reservoir. Hydraulic fluid is normally clear. However, when it's mixed with water, the fluid becomes milky. Water can enter a hydraulic system from leaks in many kinds of equipment. Hydraulic fluid can become contaminated with dirt, water, or other foreign substances. Some contaminants can corrode the actuator and cause the piston to stick inside the cylinder. 
affecting the positioning of the valve. Contaminants could also collect inside the pilot valve and prevent the pilot valve spool from shifting correctly. Or contaminants could block the flow pass in the pilot valve. In either case, the pilot valve would not operate correctly and the actuator would be unable to position its valve correctly. If you notice that a hydraulic actuator is operating sluggishly, it could mean that the fluid is contaminated with water or some other foreign substance. When water is mixed with hydraulic fluid, the mixture can turn into foam. This foam causes the actuator's piston to have a spongy movement, which can cause problems with valve positioning. Common sources of water leaks into hydraulic systems are heat exchangers. Many hydraulic systems have some type of heating system on the hydraulic reservoir to keep the fluid warm so it'll flow smoothly. In many cases, steam is used to heat the fluid. If a steam leak develops in a heater, the fluid will become contaminated with water. Heat exchangers that are used to cool hydraulic fluid can also develop leaks that can cause the cooling water to leak into the hydraulic fluid and contaminate it. Another problem that often occurs in hydraulic actuators is hydraulic fluid leaks. When a fluid leak is discovered, it should be reported to the appropriate personnel as soon as possible. Some types of hydraulic fluid are flammable, and a leak near hot equipment can present a fire hazard. Also, hydraulic fluids are slippery, so any accumulation on the floor should be cleaned up. In this topic, we discussed how different types of hydraulic actuators operate, and we saw how a pilot valve is used with a hydraulic actuator to control the actuator and valve position. We also saw how to identify some actuator problems. Now let's try some practice questions.